Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School. This is Lesson 11 for November the 10th, 2019. We're still in Unit 3 entitled, Faith Leads to Holy Living. And our topic for today, taken from the Adult Quarterly, is Let It Shine. The devotional reading comes out of uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 through 10. Uh, background scriptures taken from 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 2 through 10. And we will be studying today uh, from 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 1, verses 2 through 10. Our key verse reads, You became a model to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. The Lord's message rang out from you not only in Macedonia and Achaia. Your faith in God has become known everywhere. And that is taken from 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 1, uh, verse 7 through 8a. And that is the NIV translation. Our lesson aims today, number one, is to comprehend the importance of the witness of the Thessalonian Christians despite their trials. Secondly, to appreciate the role of faithful imitators of Christ. And then thirdly, to become positive examples of faith and love to other believers in Christ. We have three outlines uh, today that will be a part of our lesson. Uh, the first outline is entitled, Thanksgiving for the Faithful. Uh, second outline is entitled, the, Sp the Response of the Faithful. And then our third outline is entitled, The Example of the Faithful. So I certainly thank God for yet another opportunity to share God's Word with you from our Sunday School lesson. And we are uh, hoping and praying that you will join us as we study together today uh, from 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 2 through 10. Uh, we're also going to share quite a few scriptures with you. Uh, that will also help uh, as you survey this lesson with us. Uh, but our biblical context for this lesson is as follows. The church in Thessalonica was established by Paul during his second missionary journey. Uh, the congregation there was very young and had been in existence only two or three years prior to his pinning uh, of his first letter to them. So this was a time of persecution for first century Christians. They faced stoning, beatings, crucifixion, torture, and death at the hands of the enemies of Christ and those who professed faith in him. So Paul wrote 1 Thessalonians to strengthen these young Christians in their faith and to clear up any misunderstanding about Christ's return to the earth. Uh, some were confused uh, when their loved ones died before he returned as they were expecting. So as was his literary style, Paul began this letter by affirming them and thanking God for their faith and commending them for their exemplary reputation uh, as followers of Christ. And so a very beautiful letter uh, written to um, uh, a church that was growing, a church that was uh, holding fast in spite of uh, Paul is really raving about uh, their faithfulness um, uh, in, sp in spite of what they were going through uh, and we're going to talk about uh, how they were so successful this church at Thessalonica uh, you might see some reference you will see some reference uh, in Acts chapter 17 uh, regarding uh, 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 the church at Thessalonica. Uh, what I love about the Apostle Paul as we get into this lesson today it was his custom uh, to check on uh, uh, churches, check on individuals um, and I like to frame it as that he was checking on their faith. Um, we want to note here that this church is young uh, and so it's going to take a, some time before they get rooted. Uh, none of us become uh, Christians overnight, mature Christians overnight. It takes time for us to develop. And we are developing um, 
uh, in the face of many uh, uh, different issues uh, we are still uh, uh, wanting and trying and encouraging believers to grow in the face of adversity and so we saw that uh, in this biblical context uh, what this church was facing uh, as a result of their confession uh, uh, unto Christ and I, I hope that we don't take these things personally these negative things but uh, we should always remember that Christ was crucified um, not because he was a sinner not because he did anything wrong he was uh, helping others he was uh, feeding uh, uh, the hungry he was healing the sick he was raising the dead uh, but yet he was crucified and so all of us that uh, aspire to be Christians Paul uh, said it this way to Timothy he said all who desire to live godly will be persecuted and so I want you to uh, keep that in mind and so this persecution uh, these issues that this church was facing these believers uh, uh, at the height of it was death uh, and so uh, it is a real threat to uh, uh, our walk with the Lord and and it is a, a physical danger in other parts of the world uh, being a Christian but uh, what also happens among us as Christians if we uh, are not engaging in uh, physical uh, harm to someone we are causing uh, and putting stumbling blocks in their way in terms of uh, 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 murdering their influence or killing their influence where they are not able to go forward and so we see these things play out but but uh, we uh, want to make mention here that is very important that we check on one another's faith because all of us are going through something uh, and yet we are trying to maintain uh, our, our status as believers uh, and so this is a very uh, encouraging uh, epistle that the Apostle Paul wrote uh, to the church at Thessalonica and he was thanking God for them and so we want to get into these outlines today and uh, and just take a look at what Paul has to say this uh, first outline thanksgiving for the faithful this is taken from 1st Thessalonians chapter 1 verses 2 and 3 and I want to read this from the NIV translation the Bible says we always thank God for all of you and continually mention you in our prayers. We remember before uh, our God and Father your work produced by faith, your labor prompted by love and your endurance aspired, inspired by hope uh, in our Lord Jesus Christ. A lot to unpack here but uh, Paul is specific uh, uh, that he is praying uh, and that's very important if we want uh, to see other believers if we are wanting to encourage them uh, and see them grow in the Christian walk we have to pray for them uh, pray for their success and Paul highlights it uh, uh, some of the activity or the character traits of, of this these young believers in verse 3 he says we uh, and we'll unpack that as we go a little bit further um, we uh, remember before our God and Father your work produced by faith and we want to pause right here because uh, it's what we believe that 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 uh, empowers us to do the things that we do uh, we are doing things and we are encouraging and we are being a blessing uh, because we believe this is what we have been commanded to do so faith so the the gospel uh, uh, these believers have taken it off of the pages uh, and they have began to to work it's a work produced by what they believe so the gospel has impacted uh, their practical lives in a way that uh, uh, Paul is impressed and, and this is nothing short of being fruitful and we'll talk about that uh, he says your labor prompted by love this is a motive why do we do what we do in the house of the Lord what is the reason behind the things that we do uh, do we want someone to just 
pat us on our back for the things that we do? Are we trying to do it to be seen? Are we trying to do it to be recognized? But but uh, Paul uncovers their uh, uh, efforts here. Their labor is prompted by love. Uh, they love the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. They love the gospel. They love uh, 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 what they're supposed to do, and and this is where uh, uh, God checks us uh, uh, and monitors and is able to evaluate the things that we do. There is a motive behind the things that we do, and we have to make sure that that that, that we are not serving under compulsion or we're not serving uh, 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 for ill-gotten gain. But but their motive here is prompted by love and then uh, Paul goes on to say and your endurance inspired by hope uh, why do we keep going forward how is it that we're motivated to continue to uh, uh, keep going in the face of trials and this is where uh, uh, we we discover how mature we are and uh, and how we have progressed in terms of our faith because it would be very easy for us to go and sit in a corner when trials have taken over our lives and we can stop. Uh, but it sounds like here that, that these uh, believers in Thessalonica, they are persevering because they have confident expectation or they have hope in the promises of Jesus Christ. Uh, he said he would do. He said he was coming back. And uh, he said he would do all of these various things. And this gives us hope. Uh, this gives us confident expectation in the things that we're doing. And we can see in the world today that there is so much hopelessness. There is so much uh, uh, despair. Uh, the, our outlook uh, on life is is not clear. It's not encouraging. Uh, and sometimes we have to, even as believers, we have to make sure that we continue to care about what the Lord has given us to do. We have to continue to be concerned and uh, not just for ourselves, but for our brothers and sisters. We minister because we care, because we serve uh, 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 the, the, the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And he has made promises to us that uh, he's going to keep. And so even in the face of adversity, uh, Paul is speaking very well of the spiritual uh, uh, attributes of these individual believers' lives that has turned practical. And so we have to keep that in mind because, as I said, it would be very easy uh, uh, to uh, go in a corner and sit down but Paul's initial greeting indicated his love for the believers in Thessalonica as his spiritual children so uh, he also introduced his co-workers Silas and Timothy that would be the we uh, that we were talking about that we read in verse uh, 2 and 3 so uh, in recognition of their genuine concern for the spiritual growth and well-being of the church as well so uh, Paul uh, was a living example of the adage practice what you preach so this was especially obvious in his prayer life uh, he informed the Christians in Thessalonica that he was in constant prayer for them do we do that today are we in constant prayer for our brothers and sisters we know uh, I should not have to ask you are you going through some things are you struggling in various areas of your life I should understand that that this is a part of the Christian walk that this is a part all of us as believers the same thing that the enemy wants to do uh, to me he wants also to do to you which is to destroy uh, uh, us are, and he wants to destroy our effectiveness and our ability to be bold witnesses of Jesus Christ and it requires we are commanded to pray for one another and so this is what Paul is doing he's praying uh, that that uh, these individuals will continue in the faith uh, 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 all of us get weak sometimes and we need our brothers and sisters to pray for us that we maintain uh, 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 our integrity as Christians so 
one of the distinguishing characteristics of an effective leader is intercessory prayer for those uh, being led. So it is co encouraging and comforting to know that your spiritual leader makes mention of you in prayer. You know, I was reminded of a, a, a dear friend of mine. Um, he's gone to be with the Lord now, but he would always ask me and he would say, Reverend, are you praying for me? And I would say, yes, Deacon, I'm praying for you. And he would say, are you calling out my name? And I would say, yes, Deacon, I'm calling out your name. And he would say, yeah, continue to pray for me and call out my name. And so that's, you know, it, it means something. Uh, uh, we should not just say that just for the sake of saying things to one another, but we should earnestly pray for one another. We don't have to uh, 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 tell God all of the X's and O's about someone's life. He knows all of these things, but mention them in prayer that God would have mercy upon them, that he would uh, bless them to be successful uh, we have to pray God's speed upon our brothers and sisters who are laboring in the gospel and wanting to go forward. This is a church. This is corporate prayer that Paul is engaging in with others, interceding on behalf of these believers. You and I know what it what it means to uh, when we first got saved and how difficult it was for us to get adjusted to the Christian life. Uh, to get adjusted to uh, uh, the changing of friends and the changing of environments and the changing of habits and so on and so on. And so it can be very uh, unsettling uh, as we grow to understand how we are supposed to live. And so as a new convert, which is what these believers are in Thessalonica, uh, they need encouragement. They need prayer. They need nurturing until they uh, 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 grow and then they still need uh, uh, prayer so finally uh, the hope of these Christians uh, had in Jesus Christ motivated them to patiently endure and persevere while facing persecution uh, this is something that uh, we don't talk a lot about uh, as we go through things because it's very challenging for us as we wait on God to deliver us wait on God to open a door wait on God to subdue uh, an enemy wait on God to change our circumstances and sometimes in God's delaying is where uh, it defines us as Christians we are either going to endure it or we may ultimately jump ship uh, we may lose faith, we may backslide, we may wander off and stray away from the faith. And so that's why we have to check on one another's faith because we all react differently to trials. We react differently to a sustained trial. We react differently when God appears not to uh, have heard our petitions and things like that. And so we wonder if we have been left out. Uh, 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 if God has somehow forgotten these things happen to us and they are further enhanced by the enemy who tells us negative things and discourages us and causes us to have fear and anxiety about the promises of God and so even in the 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 accolades that Paul is giving uh, uh, to this church at Thessalonica there were some issues uh, about the Lord's second coming that needed to be addressed because of what others might be saying and this is where we need to make sure that we uh, check on one another because we have this would be a doctrinal matter that needed to be corrected and Paul if you read the entire uh, uh, epistle of 1st Thessalonians he addresses that account as well particularly in 1st Thessalonians chapter 4 so faith driven works of righteousness the display of self-sacrificing love and the example of patient endurance are necessary practices if the world is to see what it means to be a Christian and that's the part that again uh, we may not uh, hear so much about 
is that somebody's watching you go through your trial and how you react and and how you are uh, faithful or not being faithful or being consistent in your walk with the Lord and sometimes we cl quietly lead people astray we quietly put stumbling blocks in others way who are watching us just to see uh, what we will do they have heard your profession and your confession of Jesus Christ but now a trial is defining you and so sometimes we react differently um, and I just want to encourage you to hang in there a uh, hold to God's hand uh, he won't uh, leave you uh, and he won't forsake you uh, but the question is asked here how can the church show more love to those uh, in its immediate sphere of influence and so these are more practical things uh, uh, we can uh, demonstrate our love by <clears throat> by what these <clears throat> excuse me what these believers were doing <clears throat> in terms of uh, acting out or <clears throat> in a practical way uh, they were showing that they were uh, in love with Christ and in love with one another they were demonstrating uh, 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 in, in, in real time that they were just not uh, uh, talking the talk but they were walking the walk so there are a lot of practical things uh, that, that, that we could do uh, particularly in terms of, of, of forgiving one another uh, uh, helping one another encouraging one another sometimes it just takes a smile it takes a hug it takes uh, uh, us really uh, rolling up our sleeves to do the leg work uh, to show uh, uh, our brothers and sisters that we are concerned check on somebody if you haven't uh, practiced that uh, and just see how they are if they're missing out of uh, your circle of, uh, of uh, praise and worship if they're missing out of the church if, uh, you haven't seen them in a while give them a call and, and, and ask them how they're doing and send them a card uh, 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 this is something that uh, my wife and I practice uh, even today we when we don't see our brothers and sisters we give them a call uh, or we'll send them a card and just let them know hey I missed you today I'm thinking about you and it goes a long way to to demonstrating that uh, to others that we are concerned about them um, but this is a beautiful lesson I want to give you a couple scriptures if you are prepared to write uh, the first one is taken from Romans chapter 9 uh, verse 11 uh, the second scripture is Romans chapter 11 uh, verse 36 I also want to give you uh, the gospel according to St. John chapter 15 and verse 16 and also Ephesians chapter 1 uh, verse 5 so we're going to move to the second outline It's entitled the response of the faithful and this is taken from 1st Thessalonians chapter 1 uh, verses 4 through 6 and again from the NIV translation for we know brothers and sisters loved by God that he has chosen you because our gospel came to you not simply with words but also with power uh, with the Holy Spirit and deep conviction you know how we lived among you for your sake you became imitators of us and of the Lord for you welcomed the message in the midst of severe suffering with the joy given uh, by the Holy Spirit so Paul is just affirming here that they have been chosen by God that he's this distinction here uh, that they are his brothers and sisters and God loves them uh, but Paul goes on to say when when the gospel came uh, not just preaching but it also came with the power of the Holy Spirit uh, and and deep conviction but Paul lifts his lifestyle as witness to who he is and that's very important this is where uh, 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 what we believe becomes practical and we're able to live this thing we're able to uh, as the uh, topic of our lesson lives for us to let it shine let who we are uh, uh, 
be illuminated before the world so the world can see who we are so not only did these uh, uh, believers have what Paul was preaching they was also comparing what he was preaching with his life his life demonstrated power uh, you cannot live this Christian life without being empowered by the Holy Spirit uh, otherwise we will continue to be who we used to be and conduct ourselves uh, in the same manner as unregenerate men of God but because of the power of God uh, Paul goes on to say you know how we lived among you for your sake how we live uh, before the world uh, uh, is at stake uh, people watching us and, and being able to compare uh, uh, our talk with our walk uh, is at stake uh, we can very easily cause someone to stumble and to fall uh, just because of how we choose to live that is inconsistent with the Word of God we can injure someone's faith and 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 they may not ever tell you that you were the one that caused them to go backward and not forward so I think it's huge uh, that Paul uh, is is not just uh, preaching the gospel but he is also using his life as an example and then he said in verse 6 to these uh, 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 Christians that you became imitators of us so our lifestyle and our message impacted your life and it also modeled and mimicked that of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ this is huge and he says you welcome the message that's very important uh, I, I know that uh, we want to witness and we should we are commanded to witness to share our faith but this is something that I teach in evangelism is that you don't always have to say something you don't always have to uh, 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 speak out who you are and what you believe that that comes and that uh, uh, should be the case but your life is a very effective witness for you uh, some individuals will not allow you to say anything to them but you can still live in a way uh, that you can get the message across your lifestyle is huge I hope we remember that uh, because all of us uh, need to do a better job of, a, of adhering to the teachings of Christ uh, for the sake of someone else being saved uh, the book of Titus if you've ever read that um, um, it lifts for us uh, the adorning of the gospel making it attractive Titus talks about um, young men adorning the gospel young women adorning the gospel aged women adorning the gospel what Paul is saying in, in that passage is that uh, we have to make the gospel in our lives attractive adorning to others and there's a way uh, various groups of people should be able to live in a certain way and I love the way Titus breaks it down into various groups uh, in society uh, even in the church that that we have a role to play we have a definite uh, a role to play uh, whoever we are uh, that we might allow and demonstrate that the gospel uh, it we should make it attractive or we should make it inviting for others to want to be a part of that you know this was the evangelistic uh, mission of Israel in the Old Testament they were supposed to uh, uh, they were going to receive the promised land a land flowing with milk and honey uh, they were supposed to uh, have this great inheritance that God was giving the, to them but God commanded them not to be like those in Cana don't mix 
uh, make the gospel or make the law, the Mosaic law, attractive by living with principles, with with principles of of how you love the Lord, how you treat your fellow man, and those principles they were supposed to take with them uh, and not mix in with the world, but they mixed, they mixed in with the world, uh, and it frustrated the message uh, that God wanted for for the world. And if we are not going to live the way God tells us to live, it is going to frustrate the salvation of someone else. I hope you remember that. But this is beautiful the way Paul is laying this out, uh, that they welcome the message in the midst of suffering. You know, we have to continue to pay attention to what the gospel is telling us to do, uh, even though we're going through. Uh, various things and God knows we're going through things but God still expects us to be believers to it be adherent to his word even in the midst and, and and what Paul is saying here in the NIV severe suffering and we read that the, the uh, uh, some of the issues that uh, they were facing uh, stoning uh, beatings crucifixion torture uh, that's severe but they welcomed the message even though they were going through and and Paul says here they had a uh, joy given by the Holy Spirit uh, and so I want to give you a few more scriptures that I would like for you to read and then we'll talk about this joy but I also want to give you Acts chapter 13 uh, verse 52 uh, Romans chapter 10 verse 18 and then if you know anything about Galatians chapter 5, you know that is a fruit of the Spirit, I believe, beginning at verse 22. And this is one of the attributes of, uh, of our relationship with the Lord, uh, the fruit, if you will, of, of a right relationship with Jesus Christ. You obtain the Holy Spirit. Ephesians chapter 1 would also be an excellent uh, passage to, to, to look at in terms of what you have as a believer, the benefits you have. And, and, and if you have the Holy Spirit, what the Holy Spirit will do, he gives us joy, confident uh, expectation. He gives us a smile in the midst of what we're going through. We have joy, that fruit that comes from the right relationship uh, with Jesus Christ. So we're not, we don't have to live in despair. You have a helper. Uh, uh, in the Holy Spirit, you have a, a a paraclete, if you will, that is on standby 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The Holy Spirit uh, is always with us to help us, and so we we can pray and we can ask God to to help us, and the Holy Spirit will come, and He will do that. He will help you, uh, and so I'm a living witness. So one of the proofs of having been called to ministry is the production of fruit. Uh, that's how we know. Uh, uh, if we are in the right relationship uh, with Jesus Christ, there's going to be fruit. Uh, and so this is what Paul is excited about. Uh, these individual believers, they had joy. Isn't that something? How can you have joy and things are not going well in your life? How can you have joy? Uh, uh, how can you have peace that uh, passeth all understanding but yet uh, your life your world is full of trials and so this is something that only God can do uh, through the believer and I hope that we will uh, uh, be encouraged today because of our relationship uh, this is something the enemy will not remind you of uh, of your relationship he just highlights the negative things in your life but you are a believer you are a child of God you are heir to the promises of God and so this entitles us uh, to some things to the promises of God and we can still have joy we can still praise God uh, and worship God even in the midst of trial and tribulation and so this is this is something that uh, uh, we need to embrace but some of the commentary here and I just want to read this to you it says there will be trouble to face but the presence of the Holy Spirit gives the believer power to endure with unspeakable joy that is huge there will be trouble there will be difficulty there will be trials right but 
through our relationship through Jesus Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit, God has turned it around many times in our lives to demonstrate to us that he still sits on the throne. Uh, 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 so whatever you're going through, it's not bigger than your Savior. Whatever you're going through, it's not bigger than the Holy Spirit. And so uh, uh, at some point, you can expect God to show up in your life because that's what he does for his own. And so we, we are encouraged by this unspeakable joy. And so I love this, uh, what Paul is saying here. So, but these believers, these believers in Thessalonica, I want, don't want us to miss this. They embrace the gospel. They embrace the preaching of the gospel. They embraced the message of Jesus Christ. And so as uh, 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 they mixed faith with what they heard, they were the recipients of this fruit. Another question here in the quarterly, how can the focus of local congregations be intentionally directed toward making disciples that imitate Jesus Christ? So we have to uh, do a better job of, of making the case of, of the uh, potential compromises uh, that 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 face the church today we have to be more intentional uh, about requiring and and checking on one another to see if they are having issues uh, and we have to bring these things out I think we need to be able to talk about these things in a way because uh, sometimes we are afraid to say that we are weak or we had a problem or we didn't uh, 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 particular matter didn't work out well in terms of you adhering to the faith and so I think if we talk about these things and just uh, strengthen, strengthen one another through uh, the things that perhaps didn't work out and, 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 and better be able to lift the gospel uh, perhaps you didn't obey the Lord the way that you should have and there are others who can help us this is what testifying is all about it builds up others it, it reinforces for others that, that, that we are human and that we go through things sometimes. Uh, and so we all have to encourage one another and pray for one another. And so I just think that uh, there are some practical things that we can do instead of just saying, oh, well, it didn't work out and then we'll just, uh, we'll just leave that individual alone. No, they may need prayer. They may need you to encourage them as Paul is doing. Uh, with this church uh, at Thessalonica. Our last uh, 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 outline is entitled The Example of the Faithful. And again from uh, this is 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 verses 7 through 10 from the NIV translation. And so you became a model to all believers in Macedonia and Achaia. Uh, the Lord's message rang out from you not only in Macedonia and Achaia, your faith in God has become known everywhere. Therefore, we do not need to say anything about it, for they themselves uh, report what kind of reception you gave us. They tell how uh, you turn to God from idols to serve the living God. Verse 10, and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the coming wrath. What a beautiful portrait of a of a church uh, that has pr problems, has trials, but is thriving, that is encouraging others, that is embracing the message of Jesus Christ, and they are being examples. We have heard so many times in our culture today about role models. What kind of role models do we need? Believers are uh, should be the kind of examples that others want to follow. Your light needs to shine in a way. And Paul is just going on here. It says the Lord's message rang out from you. How you lived it was known in other places in Macedonia. And I like this. Your faith in God has become, become known everywhere. What do people say about us? If, if I could just 
present that to us today are we living the way uh, that we should um, you know this is a, a, a mirror for all of us to take advantage of through this text today uh, your faith in God has become known everywhere are we telling people about God are we living this thing out so uh, people can see that we are of God and that we love God and that we love his word one of the things I will share with you about the Holy Spirit if he has indwelt you do you know you will speak of Jesus Christ you will speak of the Word of God you will speak of the way of Jesus Christ if the Holy Spirit is in you you will testify that Jesus is Lord it will come out you will not be able to keep that secret if the Lord is in your life if the Holy Spirit is in you you will say these things and so I I do give uh, God the praise uh, uh, for these believers in Thessalonica but I think we need to look at the fact that who's infusing them uh, they can't get the glory for this they cannot get the glory for how they are living God will not share his glory with another so I think as we applaud these believers understand without God Jesus said it best he said apart from me ye can do nothing so we have to see the the undercurrents of Jesus Christ working through uh, these believers via the power of the Holy Spirit and they are empowered by God to do the things that they're doing and others are being able to see God's glory manifested in their lives we can't take the credit for it I cannot take the credit for God uh, sustaining me I can't testify to anyone that it was my goodness and it was uh, 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 all of my intellect and that that caused me no I have to give God the glory for sustaining me for giving me the ability to do the things that I do I have to give God give vent to the Holy Spirit for empowering me because I know without him and apart from him I can do nothing so I want us to temper this uh, uh, with uh, what uh, Paul is saying about this church it's not them uh, in an isolated uh, uh, situation but they have been empowered by God and we know that to be true and so it goes on to say uh, verse 9 for they themselves report what kind of reception you gave us they tell how you turn to God from idols to serve the living uh, and true God why is Paul continuing to mention God because he is at the seat he is at the root of why these believers are successful and being fruitful uh, uh, the joy they had is of the Holy Spirit the works the faith all of these things belong to God uh, even turning God is giving them to the ability uh, 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 to turn away from other deities and I hope that uh, you would look at uh, at your leisure some of the other religions that were being practiced in in Thessalonica and you will see all of the different uh, 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 so-called gods of their day and it took God to keep them uh, uh, through in the midst of all of this we are in this world but we don't keep ourselves it takes God to keep us it takes God to watch over us it takes God to manifest his power in our lives so we can stay the course God gets all of the glory for who these believers are and what they have been able to accomplish in their lives let us not forget that and so finally in um, this uh, uh, question here is in view of the example of the Thessalonians how does the collective witness of your congregation compare so needless to say we need work and it's not about uh, any type of competition uh, we all have shortcomings and even in this church I'm sure they had shortcomings uh, uh, but overall they made progress in their walk with the Lord and so I hope trust and pray that this lesson has been a blessing to you 
that you will be encouraged by it and that you will continue to encourage others we need to check on one another's faith so this closing prayer dear God help us through the filling ministry of the Holy Spirit to let our light shine as examples of your son Jesus Christ in the midst of a dark and sinful world in Jesus name we pray amen so I hope trust and pray again that we have been a blessing to you and until such time that the law will permit us to come together again, we say God bless you.